It is day number five of the Nexus Games, and today we're going to find out who's going to advance from the group's phase all the way to the playoffs. 16 European national teams have participated up to this point, but only eight can make it to the quarterfinals next weekend. My name is Kendrick Swish, and I'll be your host tonight, once again joined by my lovely co-commentator Tetcher and spot-on analyst Bakery. How's it going, gentlemen? And what do you think when you basically come to this point where you realize it's starting to get serious in this tournament. It is really getting serious. We're about to decide the basically who is getting out of the group in A and B. There is no more backup plans for these teams. This is the final moment for them to try and get some last minute points. And at the end of today, we might end up with tiebreaker matches, which is what I'm personally looking forward to. <laughs> tiebreaker is always a very, very fun thing to watch when every team really has to give it his best shot. For now, though, guys, we're going to take a look at the group situation that we have at the European Nexus Games. Four groups consisting of four teams each we have for you. Starting with Group A, that is a group we're going to tackle today with France, Finland, Italy, and United Kingdom. France looking good with a 2-0. Can they maintain their form? Is what we're going to find out. And then, next in line, Group B, Germany, Denmark, Hungary, Belgium. And this, guys, is the group that could get really dicey with a lot of teams still having chances to advance. Yeah, both of these groups, as you can see, with the exact same score set up with a 2-0 at the top of the table in the form of France and Germany. And then, Finland, Italy, Denmark, Hungary, all on one zeros. But those teams at the bottom of the table, the UK, for example, put up a pretty exciting game against Finland over the last two days. And Hungary, Belgium, and Denmark have all put up some really stellar games in that Group B. The interesting thing about Group A specifically is that the United Kingdom actually still have a chance to make yeah. it out. Yeah if we get some really crazy results in our series today. Absolutely, it is not over for any of the teams here in Group A and B. But just in case you weren't able to watch us the few days ago, we have you covered. We have our schedule laid down for you right now with the next overlay. And we're going to take a look at all those exciting best of threes that we're going to watch today. France versus Finland. That is by no means a clear matter. France, Finland look really good on paper. Can they show what they got today? Hungary and Belgium is another one of those closely matched series with Hungary having to suffer from a setback against Germany. And speaking of Germany, they are in a close best of three against Denmark, who many of us consider to be a really solid team. Last but not least, Italy against the United Kingdom. And as Bakery and Tetcher just said, the United Kingdom, with a little bit of help from the other group teams, could still make it. There is the smallest of chances, but any chance is a good chance when it comes to our home country getting out. But it is a similar situation, I believe, in Group B, Belgium. Absolutely. They're not out yet. There is a small scenario where they could try and make it into a tiebreaker scenario. Basically, none of the teams can afford to have a slip up today. They all need to perform their A game if they want to maintain their chances for the quarterfinals. The first best of three, the first epic battle is going to between France and Finland, though. And France, by many considered to be one of the big names, one of the big favorites in the tournament, is going to have, fin uh, have to face Finland, who has a couple of really decent players, but for some miraculous reasons, Bakery, they weren't able to pull off their full potential yet. Yeah, absolutely. So Kleftor has shown fantastic ranged assassin play, but when he's been stuck on that second support like Vega, he hasn't performed as well as he needed to do for Finland to win games. But this is his chance. If Finland win this game, they have a great chance to actually make it out of the group. But fans, they need this to secure their spot. And Finland, some of their biggest issues have been with consistency. Yeah. We have seen them perform very wonkily against Team UK, for example. Uh, but they also, in that Team UK game, played probably their best match of the tournament so far. And if they play like that, then they have a potential chance against France. But if they play like they did potentially against Italy, I'm not so sure. And I know that we're excited to find out which battlegrounds are going to be played. And I know that you guys out there are just equally as excited. So without further ado, let's get to the nitty gritty and take a look at the map vetoes here for this first best of three between France and Finland. Haunted Mines is out of the picture. France says, nope, we do not want to play on that wonky battleground. You saw which kind of shenanigans yeah. were able uh, to happen yesterday. Finland actually picked that map against the United Kingdom yeah. and they played it really well. So a good ban for France. We see Black Hearts Bay banned out as well. We've seen it once before to, uh, in this tournament, but Finland's not wanting to go to that very PvE favored map. 
Absolutely, and those are actually some really cool old-school battlegrounds that the community out there was able to pick from before because there was a vote going on of which battlegrounds we will have to face here in the European Nexus games. The community in general is a very crucial part of this. You will be able to vote later on as well, so make sure to let your voices be heard. For now, though, we're going to ta uh, Tomb of the Spider Queen here. Whew, no Towers of Doom, but a similarly epic battleground for sure. Very epic battleground indeed, and we've seen in some of the games, France, in their first game of the tournament, basically, were able to bring out some insane play, although they have repeatedly on this map shown that they can sometimes have issues in the early game. Exactly. Fans almost always lose the early game on this map, but as soon as they make it past the early game, they've looked untouchable in both of their games on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Yeah, and of course, when we talk about Tomb of the Spider Queen, one hero, one player we have to highlight on the side of Team Friends is Danatan with that yes. almighty Zagara, almost it seems. Yeah, he has picked it, uh, picked it twice now in this tournament and has been, had great success with it so far. Absolutely, and if you guys want to let us know what you think of this best of three, then let us know by letting your voice be heard in the chats. Use hashtag FR when you think Team France is going to take it, or use hashtag FI when you think the Finnish team will reign supreme. What do you guys think here? How well has Finland prepared for this? Because this is without a doubt the hardest matchup in their group. It's definitely the hardest matchup in their group. I would have hoped they would have prepared a lot, but they really always seem to back down onto those that same style of getting the Genji or something like that. Something that Tix can try yeah. and hard carry on if he's able to pick something up. But we've also seen them try similar heroes in the same style and have less success with that. Yeah, it, it's safe to say that Tix had a very mixed result, very, very mixed results in this tournament thus far. When he played the mages like Kel'Thuzad, didn't really look as convincing, but on the Genji, he was a force to be reckoned with. Absolutely. and. Tix is the key player here for Team Finland. If he can perform just like he did throughout the entirety of Open Division on teams like Bushido Esport, then he has a fantastic chance to make Finland win at least one game in this series. But if he doesn't, yeah. it should be pretty easy for fans. We've also been talking about other players who can stand out if they have the right hero, like Klefta. But once again, you need to get them on something they are comfortable with. Yeah, and Klefter felt very good the longer the series lasted. On this Chromie, he was a force. He was an absolute monster. For now, though, the Rhaegar is banned out. And Rhaegar, we talked about this yesterday as well, gentlemen. Rhaegar was one of those, or is one of those heroes that has really risen in popularity and partisanship throughout this tournament. Yeah, completely agree. He has been in every draft so far this tournament in some way, shape, or form. Very rarely slipping below the first rotation, whether that's in ban or first picks. Yeah, absolutely. The thing I'm really interested in for fans here is will they pick Zagara? We saw them pick it incredibly early yeah. yesterday. I think they were scared it would get banned out. I'm not sure if you can justify picking it in the first rotation from second pick, though. What if it were to happen? What if Danaton really started to pick uh, Zagara first, maybe second or third? What would you think is a good counter for Team Finland to counter that bakery? I would honestly like to see something a bit off meta, like gotcha. maybe an Alarak. He's, yep. ah. he's actually fantastic on Tomb of the Spider Queen in rotation because of the amount of kill pressure that he can bring but he is a hero that requires a very strong player and a lot of preparation. What about Ragnaros? Not that one so much. Ragnaros has a very tough time laning against Zagara because he is full melee and he yeah. needs to stay in melee range to get that sustain. So Zagara have... tends to be a counter matchup. Yeah. And not as much as that hard engage potential that the Alarak can offer. Yeah, a hero that is often brought up to lane against Zagara is Illidan as well, but for some reason Illidan doesn't seem to have really found find his way into the Nexus games just yet. To be fair though, France currently do have heroes who would counter an Illidan, so I do not think we're going to be that seeing is actually very true. even more yeah. in this game if Finland were thinking about it as a counter to that Zagara. So Johanna picked up for fans, and coming into this tournament, we thought this was a fine place for her to be, but so far she has seen almost no success in the Nexus games. Yeah, I think the only exception really was yesterday when Team Russia was able to win with her. But so far, as you said, Bakery, the Crusader having a little bit of a rough time in this tournament, Tetra. Yeah, she's really not performing as well as a lot of people would hope. But like you said, Russia able to do it with yeah. Bless Shield, for example. And she is holding her own in terms of being a solid tank. It's just engaged potential, one of the biggest things that she lacks. 
I very much like the style that Team Finland is going for here. So they are not highly prioritizing a hero for ticks. Instead, they are trying to make sure all their other players are comfortable, and they're going to use Tix's flexibility and strength as a player to last pick him something strong. And that's quite an important point to make. Heroes of the Storm is not just nice. about one player exclusively. The Nexus yeah. games in particular, where teams were formed from scratch, you really need to make sure that everyone is having their comfort zone ready, everybody feels comfortable, and that's the garb. And we can basically see that there's two targeted respect slash um, just yeah. comfort bands, the Zagara and the Genji, respectively. So we were talking about him on the first day, but we didn't really mention him from there. What do you think about the potential for a Zul'jin, potentially for We haven't seen him at all, that's so crazy. Yeah. I think Zul'jin's viable, but Zul'jin is definitely not a stung hero. So justifying picking it over something like a Valor or even Greymane tends to be quite difficult. And you have reminded me that Greymane is somehow not in this draft yet, despite the fact he has joined ETC and Rhaegar as one of those heroes that seems to be in every first rotation we've seen so far. Yeah, absolutely. We could also see another long-distance poker, Gul'dan, find his way into the game. He hasn't been banned out just yet. Always a strong side, especially if combined with the Johanna. Johanna pulls the wave together, Gul'dan finishes it off. There is that Greymane, and did Ariel coming okay. in for Team France. Very interesting oil pick there. What are they going to pair that with? Greymane, so far is their solo ranged and might end up being a solo ranged if they do pick a melee assassin last. That means there's not really a battery for the oil. There's not someone yeah. who can generate that energy reliably. I mean, they could maybe send the Greymane in the solo lane and then pick another range, but do you really want to rely heavily on that solo tank Johanna, which is actually the form she hasn't been successful in. When Russia made her work, she was a second tank or uh, basically accompanied by a second tank. Yeah, we have it. Uh, and this is still possible for them. Greymane can fill that solo damage role and leave them open for that particular style if that is the way they want to go. At the start of this draft, there were a lot of votes in favor of fans. I think I saw something at like 80%. Yeah. But as the draft has gone on, we have seen fans pick something that does appear to be quite weaker and the community voting has reflected that and of course we cannot forget about the great finnish community there as well watching and cheering for their team yeah. finnish esports fans are always very outspoken when it comes to supporting their favorite uh, esports athletes the gul'dan you were talking about earlier does make it in and anna who has been so popular along with gul'dan in this yeah. tournament is coming in for team finland so likely, are we going to be seeing Tex on that Gul'dan and just everyone else covering him at this point? The double support potential? I think Sonya? so. We do see the nano boost on Gul'dan or the nano boost on Sonya. So definite flexibility there. Yeah. I think the thing that stands out for me is that Oriol is going to have a tough time getting those burst heals out against Anna's biotic grenade. Very true. Everyone has to group up for Ariel healing, whereas Anna, she loves it when people do that. They group up, get grenaded, and then even if they want to, Finland can use Horrify to make sure that everyone is split up again. Yeah, and speaking of heroic abilities there, guys, I think there's a lot of playmaking capabilities here on the Finnish side. The potential mosh pit, as you said, the Horrify is huge, the grenade, the nano boost. There's so many tools available that if when they're played well together, they can really turn things around in a team fight against France. Solo tank Johanna. We were thinking about it, and it looks like they are going to take the risk here. So it looks like they're sending the Greymane bot, and that's interesting. They picked it after the Sonya from Team Finland, but the Sonya should be a very comfortable matchup and should absolutely dominate that bot lane. Yeah, and do you think that a Johanna solo as a solo tank is going to be enough to hold the front line against all the aggression that the Finnish team has brought to the table here with the Sonya, with the ETC, and even uh, a Gul'dan who's horrified can deal terrible, terrible things to the enemy team? Johanna is incredibly tanky, and the damage isn't likely going to be enough to immediately blow her up. The issue I have is, like you said, the counter aggression that she's going to be able to offer due to the fact that they have Utha and Anna. And a sleep dart, once that iron skin is gone, is going to basically ruin any kind of counter pressure Johanna can really offer. So we talked a little bit about Nano Boost and how it can deal a lot of damage if placed on a Sonya or a Gul'dan. Something that always went through my mind is why don't we use it on a secondary support so Uther, for example, could have a tons of fields available. What, what is your general uh, thought on that? So we could be seeing an Uther Q build, Battle Uther. Oh, yay. Nano Boost him, he's going to be Casting a Holy Shark after Holy Shark, and it might hurt a lot, especially against the low sustain healing that France has brought. 
Yeah, and of course, Dana Boost does also give a big chunk of mana. So that can be exceptionally useful on Uther, who from time to time, if you are not managing correctly, can have big mana issues. All right, very quickly, lads, who do you think has gotten the better draft here, Tetra? I think it is going to probably be France's draft. I don't like the Johanna, but I think Greymane is going to put too much pressure onto that cooldown. I agree. I think France have not got a great composition for themselves, but I do think it fits them, and I do think they have the stronger players. All right, let's find out as we dive in right into the action here for game number one between France and Finland. And on the left-hand side is spawning. It's Team France, and sporting for them, it is Wonka on the Johanna. Kira is playing on the Grey Main. Brightwing is being played by Uwuk. And playing in the bot lane, it is going to be Masquerade on Ariel. And Danatan is on that Valor. And their opponents are going to be Team Finland with Kiskifish on ETC. MXD is playing the Ana. Klefter on the Uther. Tix is on that Gul'dan. And last but not least, we're being joined by Thelduin on the Sonya, the Soul laner in the bot. And talents-wise, we are not unfortunately seeing a full Q build for Uther to start off with. <laughs> so nano boosting is more than likely going to be on the cooldown. Although you mentioned putting it on the Uther, and that actually amused me in the fact of what if you put it on ETC? Just face melts forever. <laughs> just consistent crowd control. Not the highest damage output though. As ETC's damage majority comes from his auto attack. I mean, it was basically just a, a thought process here yeah. for me. Like, if you play double support and one of them is Ana, yeah. what happens if you put it on the other support? If you it's really nice need it, to right? Fairy craft yeah. when you need it. This is why we will sometimes see Abathur's copy the support player if oh, you yeah, need that it. extra healing. We've seen that to great success, actually. Yeah. I can't remember. I'm not sure which tournament it was, but at some point, Uzo was copied. Tournament. There was a Rhaegar copy. Yeah, there we go. Like, Rhaegar copy is very strong to begin with in the first place, and uh, you should never underestimate the value a secondary support could bring with even more ability power. But Abathur is not taking place in this game, so we're going to focus on what we actually got here. Sonya is landing with that Ana support. ETC joining in yeah. as well, but not hitting. Danatan with a good reflex there on Vala. As MXD picks up yet another Sleeping Dart stack. Now, we've seen big issues with Anas in this tournament for struggling to stack up that Sleeping Dart level one quest. Yeah, exactly. We've actually seen a couple of games where Anas weren't able to stack it up, and only after hitting level 13, 14, 15, yeah. were they actually getting all the value. And you really need that, because two instances of your healing dart is so huge. Sometimes oh, we yeah. saw what happened when uh, uh, the hero that you don't want to hit intercepts the healing, and heroes may actually die for that. Yeah, we saw it in a Chogar game where it yeah. did not go well. Another stack being given over. And of course, it's nice once you get the later levels to, uh, once you get to level four, landing the sleeping darts, you're also going to be doing a little bit of damage. Right, uh -oh, to Masquerade. Masquerade. Clutch heal there will save Masquerade. Yeah, and you should never underestimate the constant poking that an Ana can actually deal in lane. Aureal, she struggles so hard when she faces AoE pokers like Lunara, Gul'dan, or as a slightly lesser uh, version here, the Ana. So yeah. consistent poking is definitely going to prove uh, quite the problem. The Sleep Dart is very long range, and yep. with this level 4 talent, that is almost certainly going to be the usual. Kiski the Open fish. does do a bit of damage. It's a fish. We'll start up two members, but not going to be able to yep. achieve much with that. Bribing has basically landed Arcane Flare on two heroes almost every single time. Speaking yeah. of getting good value. Yeah, unfortunately, Gul'dan Tix was too low on health there. Oh. As we see Vala getting popped here by Team Finland. This dual lane between Feldwin and MXD seems to work like a charm, Tetra. It really is. Taking the focus attacks on that Sonya as well for even, even a get more going. burst damage. They are doing such a good job with the aggression here. Yeah, one kill, of course, is not going to turn the tides of battle too, too much in the early game. However, that is already a nice little sign coming in from the Finnish team to show that they are not afraid to face the big dogs in the tournament. However, as a reminder, France undefeated on this map, undefeated. but they always have issues in the early game. So this is definitely to be taken with a side of salt. It's the late game where they really start to turn things around. Absolutely. In the meantime, we're going to be very, very close to level 6 here. Both teams at an almost even experience level. Beautiful heal over the wall by MXD. I really like how MXD positions himself very safely no matter where he goes because he knows how long the range of an Ana can be and uh, while Ana has a good range, once she gets initiated on, there's very yeah. little she can do. This is the point of Ana. She should be played how, what, uh, like what she is. She is a sniper. So yeah. being able to play that little bit further back, just gain your sleep dart stacks, heal up your allies, can work out very well.
Meantime, we see Tix use that Consume Soul talent at level 4. It's really good on Jimmy's Bridal Queen because you need to really keep the minion waves under control. However, it is Team Friends with the first Wet Beaver turn in. Let's see how much they can do with it. All the lanes are in pretty good shape still. The buildings, however, on the finish side haven't really been touched, except for the top lane where we have very little ammo left. Very little ammo and very little health on that gate. Barely alive here, thanks to some of the damage took earlier. Mid lane, though, as we can see, much more sustained as level 7 is hit for both teams. Yeah, Kiski Fish is getting ready with another flank on that ETC. However, Uther was a little bit too far away. Same as Tix, they need to defend those red beers first before they can think of potentially ganking on players. Tix now needs to really be able to dish out all that AoE damage. Uther doing his best here to heal him up. Clefter and Tix, those are the two players we mentioned a lot during the draft. What can they do to stop this onslaught? Good power slide by Kiski Fish and Masquerade, even with the heal. Beautiful sleeping dart, and he will be taken out. In the meantime, though, as you can see at the top, at the top, bottom left of your screen, top lane, the front wall and the towers did go down, so the reaction from Finland is forced to clear that up. Absolutely. Masquerade is having a little bit of a rough time in this early game, but at least this time, his death did have meaning. It, meant that, it meant that there was a lot of space created in the open uh, top lane and middle lane as well, because ETC had to go down for that gank. So, all in all, if you take a look at the experience count, didn't really work out as well as friends would have liked to. Yeah, once again, this early game issues. They weren't able to push in as aggressively at, at this point. As such, with level 7s already way past for both teams, mind numbing agent, by the way, for the Anna, the usual talent we see here. Both teams are right now just trying to rush towards a level 10. But Finland, they're going to try and get it via structures with the help of their first web we've returned. I like a really nice talent adaptation here by Johanna, by the way. Once again, going for a hold your ground at level 1, yep. which causes her shields to have a lower cooldown and to absorb more damage. And if you take a look at Anna, there's a lot of anti-healing, so if, the, if she had gone for a loss of hope, then that stealth oh, could have been masquerade. completely denied. Speaking of getting denied... Masquerade taken down. Another great gank Ooh. by Finland here, just in time for their web weavers to arrive. Tix having a much bigger issue. Oh. Beautiful face spell, and they kill him before the Razor Swipe lands. Kiski Fish saving his ally with a beautiful play. And this is not what we expect the friends wow. to look like. Look at the Finnish team. They're taking lives after lives. Beautiful early game they strength. Have they have 10 with this. They push in. Divide Shield, Wrath of the Berserker, Horrify, Nano Boost, and Question Mark for the moment. He's yet to pick. Oh. But 10, still a little bit away for France. And we see Finland making the most of this moment, continuing to put pressure on multiple lanes. For the most part, it was uh, just Masquerade on that Oriole for Team France who had to suffer over and over again. But now yeah. with Kira and, of course, uh, the Johanna also falling, there's just a lot of things going wrong for Team France right now. And Finland is on the warpath. They're dominating every single lane right now. First bullet dropped onto Klefter there, but the healing buff from Anna will drop him, uh, boost him back up to full health, as we do see here, France with that level 10, hence where the cursed bullet came from. Okay, now, it's a good sign for Team Finland already that Tix and Klefter are having a good game. Tix on that gold end, just schooled Kira on the grey main. Yup, same for Klefter, having a couple of good stuns here, and all of a sudden, we're being joined by yet another red wet fever wave for Finland. Yeah, Johanna unfortunately did not have a flashlight available, which could have interrupted four members potentially, yeah. as they turned in. But we are still seeing them play relatively well. France are holding themselves together, only a single level behind. This is how potentially the furthest behind on this map we've seen. Like we said, they always do fall yeah. behind in the early game, but potentially not this much. And this is a completely unfamiliar situation for Team France. They have never had to play from behind this much, especially not on towers. Uh, on <laughs> to most Spider Queen, excuse me, were yeah. that was basically their home turf. When they played against the United Kingdom, they didn't drop a single fourth. So we haven't mentioned it yet. Johanna taking sub due here at level seven. Potentially one of the not riskiest, but one of the hardest to stack talents in the game here. Healing reduction is used. But, and this web weaver will get the top fort as well. Finland taking down two of France's forts in the early game. Let's see what the French team can do here. They will have to fight for their lives. And keep in mind, if Finland wins, and if later on the United Kingdom manages to get a lucky punch against Italy, there is still a lot of things possible in this group. Finland, what can they do? They need this win so badly, and you can really see how all that extra motivation, how all that extra dedication comes to fruition here in this first game against France.
Belduin doing Sonya things, taking down the mercenary over uh, on their own side. As so many, a lot of gems in possession of France. They have 72 yeah. currently in their possession, but. Finland continuing to hold control of the map, keeping an eye on nice top. Nice ETC, like you said, getting done and cursed bullet being forced to retreat here. Danerson needs to be careful though. That aggressive ball could yeah. cost him dearly. He gets used by the Crystal Sea Ages here. What's going on, Danger? Beautiful Emerald win, oh. keeping him alive. But Ariel turning it round with the Sacred Sweep here. That was a nice turnaround by Team Friends. It looked very risky. I'm not sure if Danton did that on purpose, pretending that he was easy prey <laughs> and fully banking on Masquerade to yeah. keep him safe. Or that was if there was, to, if we had chat <laughs> available for the observers, they would probably have seen a hashtag worth. Absolutely, a, cal a calculated being put in there by Danton there. But either way, it worked out. What was potentially a mispositioning, a beautiful Aegis and an Emerald win by Bribing, allowing them yeah. to turn it round. Sometimes the un Predicted bait is the deadliest, and that's exactly <laughs> what Danton and Masquerade were going for here. Now, level 13 has arrived for the French team. So did the White Beavers, and this is their time to cement the comeback that they're about to mount. Johanna with those blessed hammers, getting extra poke damage. It's a nice talent. It's a very nice talent. Extra poke damage, extra wave clear. Very useful in general for these harder engage areas and for these longer going team fights. Yeah, keep in mind that this talent was actually buffed a couple of times. Now, if you land your shield clear on enemy heroes, you're going to reduce the cooldown of those hammers, and uh, it can really add a nice amount of wave clear and AoE damage during team fights. This cat can be very helpful indeed, especially since there's down one two of the one. Horrify. Horrify will result in the not. Right, we here though. Kerwan's escaping using disengage. ETC trying to finish him up, but he can't do so. And Kerwan. Kerva is able to escape. Beautiful save by Ewok 67 on that right wing. Not only did he teleport in in time, the immediate Emerald win to keep everybody away from Greyman on the side of Finland and the cleanse on top yeah. of it. Just the icing on the cake. Ewok is absolutely my MVP so far in yeah. this game. He has been dominant with these Emerald wins and even as a very good pixie dust. Trying to see the line. Here's the spear onto Danatan as they are in full retreat. Ewok coming in again, landing another arcade flare. And France are able to retreat. Bot lane, by the way, you saw in the bottom left of your yep. screen, was opened up a little bit here by the Webweaver. One of the towers, I think maybe two of them, were taken out. Slowly but surely, Team Friends seems to have found their rhythm here in this game. You can really see the supports, Masquerade and Ewok doing a great yeah. work in keeping everybody alive. Raymond now wants a chunk of ticks on the Gul'dan, but ends up taking more damage than anticipated. Eats a lot of poison here from Anna and Gul'dan, respectively. Both of them able to land their abilities and auto attacks onto him. I really like what Masquerade is doing. You can really see how he manages his hope count very carefully. He's always trying to maintain full hope before a team fight starts, so he has that big emergency healing ready if needed. That's very important when you are in this situation as an Ario, especially as your cooldown is cooldown reduction is not what it used to be with the level seven. It's actually not there anymore. Exactly. So you have to work with what you get. So the higher burst healing can be a huge deal. All right, 57 gems on the side of Team Friends. 18 left, 39 total now for the Finnish team. So no immediate threat for either team to really fight against another set of weight beavers here. But you can really see that 16 is here now for the French team. Wonka on the Jana, can he make that initiation happen to really nail Finland down and force an engagement? Exactly enough gems currently available for Team France if they were to just turn in and they get some Siege Giants to go with it. So it looks like they may be setting up for this if they can get control of those turning areas. Yeah, the Siege Giants are really good. You can take those, they got it. cause a little bit of distraction in the bottom lane and then pay top or bottom respectively. And that was beautiful macro play by friends. They utilized the mercenaries to open up the map for a turn in and now once again, blue French whip heroes are going to drop down in the set. This is what we're talking about. France, they were losing pretty hard in the early game, but now with very little actually fighting, they have managed to put themselves yep. almost a full level ahead, but the engagement as was attempted. Right wing teleport again, not even needing Emerald win this time. Yeah, this time it was not needed indeed. We could also see a very nice delay on Masquerade's healing. He waited until the grenade from uh, from Anna was expiring, so he didn't waste any value. This grenade was pretty easy to predict. Yep. Nobody even uh, in pressure. Ariel, by the way, going for that Will of Heaven over the Wrath of Heaven here. Even uh, Wrath of Heaven would have affected everyone. The Will of Heaven is very focused for Greymane and Valor. Still going to gain some very good effectiveness, though. 
Absolutely. Look at Masquerade. Once again, he's waiting so patiently before he uses a mighty AoE heal. Critterize now available for Brightwing. Nice. That's going to be a very useful talent when it comes to focusing and destroying one of those tanky frontliners like Sonya or ETC even. All three keeps are still alive and relatively healthy Sleep. here for Finland. Ticks hovering around the area. So he moved quite far out of base looking for a Horrify a little bit earlier, but was not able to find one and is now forced to back up with the rest of his team. They're on even talent, but still a full level behind. They want to not get themselves caught out and put themselves at risk of losing a keep. And up to this point, Tetcher, everything came true what we talked about during the draft. The French team having their difficulties in the early game. However, now the game seems to be under control for them. They are the dominating team right now. They catch a couple of sleeping darts here and there, but as long as they drop on Johanna, everything is fine, or is it? Lots of damage is dropped, so there's some anti healing. ETC power sliding in, trying to focus down onto the bright winger here. And. Brightwing able to emerald with against Edis Marshmit though, focusing it down to the holy cow, and down goes Brightwing. Nicely played here, that horrify. Able and of course the Bosch pit right after that Aegis able to set them up. All right, that was not too bad of a team fight. The Finnish team establishing dominance on that battleground and they could turn in as a result. Brightwing unfortunately was not able to make it through. Almost all of the heroic abilities on the side of the French team are now on cooldown as well. Same goes for Finland though. So this is probably going to be a very careful approach. Just poke down the towers and retreat because as long as your most important abilities aren't ready, you cannot go for an all-in team fight. Yeah, you do not not want to take that kind of a risk. For now though, Finland, they are still gonna try and pressure with these web weavers. Full health, full energy, yep. etc. Although the bot lane one isn't gonna get too much pushing potential done. It is very much stuck in their own base. Yeah, I was actually gonna say this is not as bad as it looks at first glance for Team France because they only have to worry about one lane at a time right now. The middle lane, of course, needs to be deep pushed as quickly as possible. Graham is doing a good job on the top lane. Yeah. They now actually try to go for a flank in the back line. We see him Maybe now. wrapping back around. Just want to take the risk. Horrify back in three seconds. So he was potentially worried about that. As we do see Klefter continuing to drop the studs. Klefter, by the way, went for Trolls Deliverance, giving it more bonus healing to his team. All allies hit, get 40% bonus healing for, I believe it is six seconds. That is a pretty big deal with this double support comp they're running. Yeah, normally you're used to seeing uh, Benediction, which basically yeah. gives you a, a reset on one of your basic abilities depending on which you use first. Very interesting to see Vala also getting reinforced by the Aurel who went for the attack speed as long as yeah. Vala receives the crown of the Bill Bestow of Hope. Heaven. So full carry mode now for Danatan and his team really needs him to deal all that damage to take their opponents down. Still, half a level lead for the French team despite taking a couple of setbacks. Driving, teleporting Wonka. in here, getting the of both of those pushes. Wonka dropping the Iron Skin. Sleep Dart is now fully stacked. We're going to see That's those good. piercing heals, which once again is going to combo well with the healing buffs that now both of the supports do have, which is going to help Tix as he did take that hunger for power on level 7. Fantastic stuff coming in here. I'm not really sure if the Finnish team could have engaged a little bit more decisively against Wonka, who was totally oblivious yeah. of them hiding in that bush. but. If there's a Johanna nearby and a double support lined up behind her, you normally don't want to spend all of your resources trying to get her exactly. down. Exactly. Johanna is exceptionally tanky. She yeah. was able to pop Iron Skin very quickly, so she was able to wade back through. The Sleep Dart did hit her, which is what gave Anna that final stack, but was, uh, with that Iron Skin activated, it did not put her to sleep. And that is actually the way you're supposed to rotate in the late game. Johanna always being the first here to enter a vision obscured area. Oftentimes when you play Hero League out there, you will see a, no, a squishy support, a squishy assassin yep. do that job. But here you always have the tank player leading the charge. So if it were to uh, yeah. get ganked, there would be only a tank and not a squishy. And if Johanna did not want to face check, she actually has somebody called the flashlight. Yeah. Perfect for seeing into those dark <laughs> yeah. bush and vent areas. Glaring into the dark. Glare. Yep with her blinding glare. Yeah, shield glare. Here we go. Now Johanna actually going in aggressively with that glass shield, but no follow-up there immediately. There may have yeah. been a little bit of miscommunication going on for the French team. And the immediate hand of protection used by Uther to keep Anna yeah. safe and alive. She's able to pull to back really quick the now. team. 
They need to be really quick here. This leaping dart fired into the blinds, and that was actually well executed and well planned in the first place by Team Friends. They realized they had a shorter walking path to those mercenaries, whereas the Finnish team had to cycle all the way around, and with their combined efforts, they took those bruiser camps really, really fast. Yeah, and with this Thrawn's really... Is here. Yeah, they're throwing around their level 20 weight, which is what allowed them to raid that camp to begin with. Working out well for them. We have that uh, that extra range, the Far Flight Quiver on Valor, making it much harder for her to be locked down. Johanna, indestructible, even if she is focused down, she's now almost impossible to kill. All right, the French team used the Bruiser camp as a distraction, buying enough time to get a turn in here. Kira delivered the final gem, and ladies and gentlemen, all the lanes are pushed in against Finland. They're going to have to defend against three Vep Weavers at the same time. And the longer the game goes, Tetcher, the more painful those are going to be able to deal with. They do now have 20, though. We have the upgraded That's nano huge. boost, the ignore pain, the redemption for Uther, so we can come back to life. We have the haunt for the cooldown. ETC yet to pick. This is a good thing because yeah. he can now quick pick Death Bot if he is in a situation where he might he die, or he can pick the quick pick the tour bus and even quick pick Bolt if he wants yeah. for that hard engage start. That's the beauty of ETC. He probably has one of the most competitive level 20 tier talent uh, talent tier in the game. So no matter what you pick, oh no, the horrify completely missed. Ticks might even fall as a result. It takes a lot of damage, but the double heal is keeping oh, him that's alive. So huge. But like you said, with horrify now down, that's a huge cooldown to burn. They really wanted that engagement there, otherwise they wouldn't have had enough time to defend anymore. But of course, the French team, they know one of the crucial abilities is on cooldown right now. And Kira takes the life of Sonya in the top lane. The Sonya down, we see Tix moving back up, the double sleeping. Oh. Oh, good. The damage coming out, Kira goes down. He's going to get a double kill. Healy, keep him alive. Oh. No, he can't. <laughs> Tix potentially just saving the game for his team there. He just made up for that little oh. snack back earlier. He just got a double kill, and that is single-handedly swinging the balance of power. ETC has taken Bolt. He could try to make a play. He's going for He's it. He's moving in, trying to chase down Vala and Ariel. Johanna Fish. with Iron Skin activated. Iron Skin is now finished. Kissy Fish power slides forward. Kills off Johanna. Oh, the blink. forward. The good detainment strike, though. Masquerade saving herself at Danata. Oh, how much can the Finnish team do now that they got this beautiful triple kill against the Frenchies. They're going in at the top lane. They're trying to take the boss right now. I think that is a safe call. Otherwise, there could have been enough time for the French team to delay any further going attacks. This boss may be paired with a turn in. They've got 40. Ah, it's not going to be enough. They need a couple more gems. Yeah, Sonya is about to respawn. She can clear bot lane. Needs to be careful, though, because look at Valor and yeah. Ariel chilling in the bot lane, potentially looking to put some pressure on yep. and for supports. They will not be able to prevent this boss from being taken, though, and with Sonya already back alive, she will clear out bot, she will clear out mid, and she will keep her team in the game. Yeah, Valor and Oriel did a really good job at keeping Sonya occupied and busy, so she couldn't join the fray here. Now, still, two keeps down. Look at the lanes. They're all pushed in against Team Finland, even if they were to summon the Wetfields now, they would take a yeah. long time to join them. So right now, what they're hoping is the boss can do some yep. serious damage top up lane. at this top lane, and that the Web Weaver could potentially allow them to push through the keep. If oh, they're able to do so, they could try and get a kill, and with that much damage, it's very high potential. Now Tix needs to hit that Horrify. He's been doing such yeah. a wonderful job with those damage abilities already. If the Horrify now lands, this could be lights out for Team Friends, who are desperately trying to keep that top lane alive. Sonya has arrived. It is now a 5v5. The Web Weaver has arrived just in time, as the boss is taken down but the keep has also died. This web weaver could be what yep. they need. The last chance for Finland. And the other two web weavers are only clearing the lanes right now. As Finland move in and begin to from range poke the chorus, they look to potentially try and grab Danatan on Masquerade as well. Danatan with a far flex cover is trying to use his longer range now to chip down that web weaver. And I think the French team has spread them out, uh, spread themselves out in a nice concave so well that it's extremely hard for Finland to make an engagement happen. They're using their keep to their advantage. Selduin pops that wrath off the Berserker. They want to try and do something. They want to try and force yep. anyone from France out of this sleeping dart. Does not land on Danatan. That would have been huge. Curse bullet. Not enough to finish off Thelda and Eber, especially with that healing bonus he's getting. And this was so well defended by Team Friends. They spread themselves out in a half circle. Oh, wow. That so that we were not yeah. clear. Yeah, look at look at the catapults. They're actually doing a lot of work on the finish core already. And Wonka is trying to dismount them and keep them occupied for as long as possible. But once again, that defensive formation was so nicely executed by Friends because there are so many 
many AOE abilities that really yeah. punish clumped up teams on the side of Finnish team. So that mercenary camp taken by Valor yep. and Ariel came up huge in the end, able to not only clear the web weaver, but do 15% damage to Finland's core. Finland, they're not out of the game yet, but the fact that that push did not end the game is starting to make it look a little rough for them. Yeah, this game couldn't have gone any closer here. Still a keep advantage on the side of Team Friends, but look at the gem count here. Nothing really happening on either side. 20 in the bank for Friends and only 10 in the bank for Team Finland. Finland's just on pure defense duty right now, clearing out mercenaries to give themselves some push potential because too late to catapult. It's hard to defend. Yeah. The difference is Frauds, they only have one lane to deal with that top lane. Uh oh. And there goes the is available here for Wonka. It is procced out here. Gets a hit tomorrow and a cleanse there. to get him out. Emerald's win will prevent the chase potential based so much damage onto this Johanna. Wow, this was a lot closer than I thought. And it's she still not over. Die. Wonka's not in the safe zone just yet. She's taking any poison. They have to pop the shield of hope to keep Wonka alive here. And now Wonka needs to be extremely careful on how he engages team fights. No more passive, no more un, uh, indestructible here available. So many cooldowns used to save him as well. No more cleanse. And this opens the mid lane for Team Finland. That engage on yeah. Jana, something you normally don't do, was so good. And Vala's not here. She is currently taking that mercenary in the bot lane again. She needs to pull. She finished yeah. the mercenary. She needs to pull back to help her team and to try and force back Finland because Finland have already opened up another keep. This mercenary, though, is going to force Finland to retreat. Oh, that, that was so cool to see, like an engagement on a Johanna, who's one of the most tanky targets in the game, basically caused Finland to take yet another keep, and now it's dead even. Look at the Vala, though. She had all the time in the world to almost destroy that Siege Giant camp all by herself. Now, two catapults here in the bottom lane. This is definitely something Finland needs to take care of. In the meantime, though, the, sweet, uh, the French team, they are trying to get some value in the opposite lane. They really are. They're clearing out the catapults that are starting to accumulate up there, and also putting pressure on it, because if you look Lost at that Top keep of, that top keep of Finland, it is very weak. So like you said, if the yep. France are able to take it down, or even just keep the lane cleared, if they are able to take that boss, they could definitely still end through top lane. I can already see the next boss being a point of contention oh, here. Yes. Both teams are really going to try to fight hard for it, because as we said earlier, there's not a lot of gems available. None of the teams is even close to getting another set of weight viewers anytime soon. So the only real objective on the map, once it gets respawned, is going to be that boss. Yeah, like you said, both teams just trying to grab gems. They're so far away. Yeah. The boss, though, is the big factor. And France are positioned much better for this, except for Greymane. They are very, very split indeed. Kiski Fish, Fish has, has the He moves forward. The table right doesn't land. Divine Shield. Oh, no. no. The Sleep Dart doesn't land. Ewok is down the target. Emerald Wind is used for the follow up stuff. Good Kiki Emerald. He's in position, but he's dropping low in health. Get his healed by his team. Power side back, and he's able to stay alive. Good spear onto Priming. She's dropping the Ice Block, but it's not going to be enough. Oh. But the Shield of Hope might be. The Aegis is keeping her alive. Where's Greyman? Greyman is on the core. to pressure the core to keep to force Finland to retreat. Tix getting pressured by Johanna with so much healing. Interrupt him. He's trying to be, but he blocked the escape. From his team there, Johanna indestructible. Is Graham is on the core. It is focusing down the shield, trying to end the game here. Taking a lot. They stay damage, alive. Though. If they stay alive, they can win this game. Graham brings the core down to 60. Sonia's back though. It's a four versus five situation. The French team banked all their hopes on that one Graham, but now all of a sudden, there. Oh, the core. Oh, Graham teleporting the teleporting as well. She's going it's in. Be a two versus four on the core. Sonia desperately trying to defend. Graham's too low. He can't end the game here. Sonia shades him down. 42% on the core. The Fury's youth, they're being Brayman is dead! End the game! Brayman is dead! Brywick falls to retreat, there's no more damage on the core of Finland as they focus down the core of France! The Finnish team has done it, they turned this fight around, they were able to get kill after kill, and with an unbelievable late game performance, so much focus and concentration, they take game number one over Team France. Well played by Team Finland, bringing it out in the end there, even after losing two keeps so early in that late game. That was an unbelievable set of events here. We basically have to cover so many little decisions that were made on both sides. And Bakery, what goes through your mind when you see a heated ending like that? Wow, wow, that was a tense ending. And I, I would have loved to be a, been a player in that, honestly. <laughs> That's, those moments are so cool. Um, Finland making 
some shot calling errors in the mid to late game, but in the late, late game, they performed when it matters. That engage on Johanna, securing the mid keep, the way they played around the catapult pressure on their core, and the way they played that final team fight, which I hope we can get a replay of later on, was absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. I also really love, though, to give something over to France there. I love that Valor put so much stead into that bottom mercenary camp. It really just ruined a couple attempts that Finland might have had to end the game. Absolutely. But let's get into my replays. So the first one I have is France basically falling apart in the early game. As we watch here, you saw at the very bottom of your screen, Uther and Anna were actually trapping Masquerade on the oil. So they get the first kill. Look top lane. Gordon is actually 1v1ing the gray main and ETC is running into help. So it's not on our screen yet. But if you look on the minimap and you can see the health bars going down, Gordon gets so, so low. And he gets just, how much HP is that? Like 100 wow. HP. But he survives thanks to the fantastic face mode from Kiski Fist. Now look at mid lane. Johanna's already used her Unstoppable. Great timing from Klefto on the stun. Fantastic spear to follow up. And Johanna does end up going down as well. So fans completely fell apart as soon as that trap from Finland was successful. Yeah, Masquerade. We've seen issues with Ariels in this tournament so far, and this is one of the biggest issues she has. She's very vulnerable. She doesn't have that kind of escape that maybe Uther could, or Brightwing could have. Yeah, and Ariel continues to be a liability in most of those games in the Nexus games. Bakery is going to tell us what the second clip has in store for us. So as we went forward in the game, we saw Finland abuse Fant's early game weakness, but here Fant showed their mid-game prowess. So Dantan aggressively votes forward, but he actually just baits them to go in. So the perfect Aegis comes out, like right now. The Bless Shield do stop them falling. Look at Ewok, look at, he te teleported in. The perfect Emerald Winds completely splits people up. Divine Shield is still available, but he is no longer in range. And two people, Sonya and ETC, die at the exact same time. And this is why fans get back in the game and get control and snowball that to a level lead. Yeah, absolutely true. And a player that I wanted to talk about real quick is Tix on that Gul'dan. We saw a couple of moves where he single-handedly dismantled one, two players of Team France at the same time. And that is my next replay, my yeah. friend. So as we go into it, we see MXD on the Ana. He's going to get the double sleep on the top lane here. So they, they chase down, they kill the Sonya, and it's looking like they're going to get the keep. Look at FMXD. So he sleeps, he gets oh. both of them. Now Tix, he lines it up, he waits. He waits for him to start running before casting that... That E, that corruption, and it hits both of them and kills both of them. <laughs> Just the corruption. Absolutely great placement and great timing from both players on the side of Team Finland there. You can see the small glimmer of hope from Brightwing trying to pick up the gems, <laughs> just like, just in case she lives. But that corruption does so much damage. Yeah, that play was actually made after Tix failing to land the Horrifying. We were yeah. worried about how Team Finland wanted to defend that, but with that play, he made it all up. Absolutely did. All right, Team Finland is looking strong here in that first game. Were you expecting them to come out this strong, especially of the early game or and then in the very late game, which is normally where France excels at? We know where the, uh, France has issues in the early game, but we also know that Finland has had fairly consistent issues in matches full stop. Today, though, they have shown up and they grabbed the early game, suffered a little bit in the mid game, but good crisis management, management, like you said, in the late, late game, allowed them to stop, you know, losing the game, even though Catapults really wrecked their core. So the interesting thing about fans is we saw them have shaky early games and we saw them have absolutely outstanding mid games but we never got to see them in the late game because they'd already yep. won the game by that point. <laughs> This time, uh, Finland, they were sticking in the game. They got it to the late game, and then fans start to show a lot of issues, and especially that final play. Greyman can never get that call. I am sure that Greyman yeah. can never get that call. It's not the but there's a miscommunication. His team think they can, and they suicide just to let him, but he can't get it. And then Sonia teleporting back in the nick of time, really saving the core. For now, though, we're going to shuffle the cards anew. We're going to announce the battleground for game number two. It is going to be 